Okay, I'm going to begin. So w welcome everyone and thank you for coming. Uh, so I'm going to give the presentation here. Uh, it was going to originally be a workshop, but unfortunately, uh, I mentioned it before for some of you that we just don't have the room for a workshop. We don't have tables and, and power and everything for people to do, do the labs. So what I'm going to uh, plan to do is uh, go through the workshop myself. You guys can watch. And if, if you do want to get on a laptop, you can. But uh, uh, the idea is perhaps at the end you could, you could get on if you want or from home or from work or however you want to do it. If you want to uh, do the labs yourself, you can. Um, and uh, my uh, uh, colleague of mine is actually the one who, who wrote this workshop. He uh, was really looking forward to seeing Vienna and, and being here. And he it, it's a shame because he, again, he was really looking forward to it, but also he's a fantastic speaker and, and a really good person. Um, so he worked the workshop, got it, you know, uh, accepted to the, uh, you know, to the Linux Foundation, and then he was playing soccer and he, he broke his leg. So, or actually, he pulled his Achilles teal, he, Achilles tendon. So he uh, can't walk. Unfortunately, he didn't want to risk coming here and, and re-injuring himself. So, I'm going to give the presentation for him today. Um, so the the two URLs that I'm going to go through, first one is the Watson prompt, and that's essentially the lab that he wrote and. and and we've, we gave it once before, uh, but we've added to it. We've added a lot of, uh, of, of items. Also, Watson X has changed slightly, so we've been able to uh, add more, more features to it. Um, the second URL, the red URL, is the, actually the Watson X product itself. So if you, if you get to that link, you can do, if you have an IBM ID, you can log in and, and start to use it. If you don't have an IBM ID, you can uh, register for a free trial and then you can get on and, and do the same laps that I'm doing here. So without further ado, I'm going to get to the lab. And this is the Watson Prompt Lab. And I, I should introduce myself really quick. My name is James Bush, and I work for IBM Research. I've been at uh, IBM for a couple of years now, at least. And uh, I've done a lot of different products within IBM. I started as a system engineer way, way back when we used to wear a suit and tie and, and uh, it, it was very easy to dress for work because you just had you know, you know, white shirts and, and the tie. Uh, these days it's a little more, more difficult. But uh, uh, since then I, I've worked in different organizations. I uh, was in channels business. I ended up working for, for IBM WebSphere. Uh, I, I did the R6000 product. It was our risk product, which is now the P-Series product. I was doing, uh, helping software developers develop and uh, test on, on and do performance testing on that. I ended up uh, going over to our uh, high performance website group and was doing performance testing and helping customers like eBay and others you know, run uh, essentially WebSphere and other products uh, on their systems and efficiently and effectively. And, uh, and then I ended up going to IBM Watson. So you mentioned that I, about five or six years ago, I joined the, the IBM Watson team and I was doing uh, Watson Assistant. And if you're familiar with it, it's our, uh, our, our chat bot. And it's probably the most successful of the Watson products that, that, there, that there's been. We've had other, other items, you know, Watson Discovery and Watson Health, which we've sold off. But uh, the Watson Assistant has been very, very good product, very profitable. Um, and what's interesting about the, the Watson Assistant is that when I was doing it, is that you know, we called it back then AI, but it really wasn't artificial intelligence. It was augmented intelligence. So it, it didn't have any intelligence on its own. So as a chatbot, you, uh, you trained it yourself. You gave it all the, all the information up front, and then uh, uh, it didn't learn on its own or self-learn. If you wanted to give it you know, the hours of the day that you know, your business was open or you know, uh, any other questions, you know, location, et cetera, you had to train it. And if you trained it incorrectly, it would have incorrect responses, of course. Um, we ended up working with, a, a, you know, during the pandemic, we had a, a big installation with one of the uh, um, uh, pharmacies, and uh, they used it, and it worked out really well. They were getting just, you know, a lot of calls into the pharmacy of when, you know, the, the vaccines will be ready, who's eligible, you know, what, what kind of vaccines are, are available, et cetera. And so the, the uh, pharmacy used the Watson chatbot to, to answer those questions. And then if it you know, uh, couldn't answer the question or 
they needed further help, they could, they could click and get to a human, but it really helped reduce the load. But again, that really wasn't artificial intelligence. It was, it was augmented intelligence where we trained it. But in this case, it's, the AI is getting a little bit smarter because it's got, with these large language models, there's so much information in a large language model that it's not just what you have given it, but it, it's, it's what's also in the model. So for this lab, uh, first we need to go to the pre-work, and that's what you need to do if you're going to do the lab today. We're, obviously, we're not, you know, most of you at least are probably not going to be doing that. But the pre-work, you, you need to get to the Watson uh, AI, be able to uh, begin to work on it, and you create a sandbox project. So the Watson lab, you know, shows you how to do that. You connect on the URL, uh, Watson AI, and if you have an IBM ID, you sign in. If you don't have an IBM ID, uh, you can click start a free trial and, and get on and uh, um, give, give your information and your email and you'll be able to get on. The biggest problem I've seen is if somebody already has an IBM ID, the free trial won't work. So that's if you're seeing problems with that, uh, email me or, or talk to me at the end and, and we, can, we can figure out how to, how to solve that. But uh, um, that's the biggest problem, but it, it depends on if you have an IBM ID or not. So you uh, start your free trial. Um, if you uh, you know, if you already have an account, you can click here, log in, um, and then the first thing you need to do is create a sandbox, so where you store all your your, your information that we'll be doing with the uh, the prompt lab. Um, so it, by default, it'll create a sandbox, and uh, Raphael was a person doing it here that that injured himself, but he's got uh, he's logged in, he's got his his uh, sandbox, and he's ready to do the, the open prompt. So go back to the, now the pre-work is done, we can go to the basics of prompt engineering. And uh, let's go to Watson AI. So as you log in, and hopefully, I know that unfortunately it's an eye test for the people in the back. I'm trying to make it as large as I possibly can. It's a very small screen, so please come forward if you'd like. There's plenty of room in the front in particular. Um, but the what you do when you when you sign in to Watson X, you have the you know the first thing you're you're, you're faced with is the chat uh, interface, and the chat interface it defaults with the Granite model. We have a bunch of different models that you can choose from here, and uh, we can view all the foundation models. So Granite is the one they, they lead with, but there is uh, oh when I was doing a search for Granite. Um, um, all the foundation models. So you'll see there's you know, a bunch of different models that you can choose from. There's the biggest one we have at the moment is 70 billion, but uh, other ones, the llama, the meta llama models, um, different sizes of the llamas, um, but it's a bunch of different uh, models you can choose from. And so each one of these you can click on and read what it's good for, if it's, it's good for uh, uh, sentiment or maybe, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, you know let, let me give you one example here, like the granite one. It's good for question and answering, summarization, for RAG, classification, generation, extraction. So you can play around with each of these models and see which one works best for you when you're, when you're playing with it. Um, but we'll leave it with granite for now. There's another way you can look at this, uh, the AI is through structured form, and we're not gonna cover that today, but Essentially, it kind of guides you as to how, how you would ideally like to do a prompt. So uh, first is instruction. You can tell it that, you know, it give, gives you an example, but you give it instructions that you want it to be, you know, fair and unbiased. Maybe you want it to talk like a pirate. Maybe you want it to, to uh, you know, like summarize the text. And you know, the, the rules, may, maybe you want uh, uh, columns or, uh, you know, the same professional tone, et cetera. But seeing the instructions, how you want the, the uh, LLM to respond, how the model to respond. And then they give you uh, the option, um, if you just try to, to you know, ask a question or, or have it, uh, um, you know, run with, you know, see what your output would be based on just a, a, a single shot of input, it's, it's kind of risky, it, it, the LLM will respond, but uh, it's much better if you give it, and that's essentially what we're talking about today in the in this lab is that it does a lot better if you give it examples. Um, and then we have the free form. And the free form is just, it doesn't have all this guiding 
of the setup and instructions and everything. And this is how he, uh, uh, Raphael begins his, uh, his lab. And so the first thing is just LLM. We, we talked about in the free form, we have all the different models that we can, we can choose from. And uh, 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 they, he talks about tokens here. Um, when, when you uh, uh, put input in and when you get responses back from the LLM, it's in token form. And tokens are essentially words. They're not quite, it, it's usually four characters in a token, but it's, um, your input is broken into tokens, sent to the, the model, and the model comes back with tokens. And um, essentially, the, the more tokens you use, the, the more expensive it ends up being, the more time and more compute power. So I, ideally, you want to have the fewer tokens if you can. Um, and then everything is text completion. So as you're doing an a, a input, it's you, you, uh, you, know, you, you give it a, you know, something to, to, to use. They say, give us ideas to start a coffee business and say, generate here. And it comes back. So this particular model is flan model. It's, it's 20 billion in size, but it's not really a useful one for generative AI and, and, and conversations. So the, the response back is coffee shop. It's not a really good response uh, based on what we're, you know, if you want to have ideas for a coffee shop, uh, that's, that's not helpful at all. Um, but what we can do is um, clear this and just give it a, an idea of, uh, you know, he has it in here. Next thing is cue the output structure. So he's just given it a, a one here, and then now we're, it, it cues the, the the model that it, how it should look. We we should get a numbered list now. So not changing anything else, but just providing a a, a numbered prompt. We now start getting something that's a little bit more useful. So uh, give ideas to start a coffee business, start a coffee shop, start a roasting business. Start an import business. Um, looks like it repeated. Start a coffee roasting business. Start a coffee shop. So we have some repeats in there. Um, so then, you know, it's not perfect, but it's a little better. Just all, all we did is change one thing. We just gave it the the cue that that we wanted it. You know, with uh, you know uh, the output structure to be a numbered list. Um, so now we have. Uh, the suggestion, and again, this is where examples comes in handy, is if you give it an example, then it, the LLM can learn from that, realizes what kind of format you want, and it should give you a, a better response. So what we're doing now is to give ideas to start a coffee business, but we're, we're first giving it examples of how to start a lemonade business. And so how to start a lemonade business is set up a stand, partner with a restaurant, arrange with a celebrity uh, to promote it. And so we'll put this in the prompt lab and generate it. Oh, and I, I didn't uh, um, clear that. I personally, I, I'm a little picky, but I like to have it go on a new line versus it autocomplete on the same line. So it just looks a little nicer. But uh, we have find a location, hire barista, uh, advertise your business. So it's it's. Since you got the same number now and the same idea uh, going forward with the, the coffee business. So you're, you've given it a little bit of training here. Yes? Sorry, um, does it um, I'm not sure if it does in this one here. Okay. In the chat, it does. And at the end, you can clear the context. If, if, if it's starting to cause trouble or you, you, like you want to start fresh, you can do a clear and, uh, okay. and it'll end it. But this one, I think, clear up what... It doesn't like save or anything. I, I don't think it, I, I, I think it's fresh each time. And, uh, and so we got a little more information. So now uh, he has a suggestion, include descriptive details. Uh, so we can, uh, it's the same example, but now he's, he's saying, give me three ideas to start my own successful coffee business. So essentially, what he's he's doing is just giving the model more more instructions. Clear. 
clear it and do a new line and find a location that is centrally located, offer a wide variety of coffee drinks, offer a wide variety of food. And you, you can see down on the lower left, it's a stop reason, end of sequence, token encountered. So it's just as, as far as it got. It, it knows it's supposed to be doing three. So it finished at three. Um, so it's getting a little better with time here. Um, but this model, again, the Flan model is not, not the best model in the world. It's not, not the most verbose model. So uh, we can uh, make some changes to it. Uh, we can set the minimum and max tokens. So tokens here on the, on the right, it looks like he's got the same 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 number of tokens. So let's, or the same question. So we'll just clear it. And then we're going to set the tokens here. Um, minimum tokens, say 100 and max 200 generate. So this will be, should be a little more verbose now. Oh, but it, it may be going based on the example. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Stop reason, max tokens. Can't quite read it. Oh, 200 generated. I think let's let's clear it and give it 300. Come on, keep talking. Well, oh, oh <laughs> perfect. So it knows it needs to do a little more, but it doesn't have this model doesn't have uh, much much better. Um, it's not very verbose this model, so. We'll switch models in a moment. You know, we'll see a better uh, example of it. Um, we can also do stop sequences. So ne now he switched over to the, the granite model, a much more verbose model. So we'll do the same thing. He's got the max tokens is 200. So we'll do that. We'll clear it. 200. Make this zero. And we'll switch to the Granite model. So the Granite model is IBM's uh, open source models, and they're really good for um, for conversation and, and generative AI. And so with any luck, we'll get a new line here, and it should go longer here. I think... Stop reason, end of sequence token encounter. I can't quite read it, so I, I expanded the screen a little bit. Yeah. Do it one more time. Well, it's not doing exactly what it, it has a, a mind of its own sometime. But in his example, and I did it earlier, um, it, it came up with too much uh, response. It was too verbose. Uh, I am using the right one, I hope. Yeah, I've got the, the right model. But then what he did to fix it, but you know, for me, it looks like it's, it's, it's working, is he, he added the stop sequences. And I wonder if it remembers my stop sequences, but you can add um, stop sequences and add it in there. So essentially, if it sees a space now, it will stop. Of course, mine is already stopping with, with uh, uh, oh, oh, I know what the problem is. I, I have the problem, I'm giving it three ideas. I missed the, the uh, give ideas to start a coffee business, that's the problem. That's the issue. Sorry about that. Give me ideas to start the coffee business. So I fixed it now. So the stop sequence, it's stopping because it now would be a, a space going forward. But let's clear this and maybe we'll see the verboseness that, that we're supposed to see before. 
No. Give me ideas. Well, it's not quite working the way it, it had done before, but um, that's where a stop sequence says you can, you can clean things up so it doesn't get quite as verbose if you want it. Um, so here's where we added the carriage returns, and then he gets the nice just three, three items there. So then we have de decoding parameters uh, here in the prompt lab. Uh, right now, by default, it, it's greedy, so essentially it's using the highest prob probability answer uh, to do the text completion. So this is a, greedy is a good way to do it if you want it to be pretty consistent. So it's gonna usually have the same response each time. It's great for testing, but it's not really creative. So what you can do is, uh, you know, reduce the, uh, the, you know, the probability and, and let it, you know, uh, get a little more, uh, more verbose, more, more sampling. It, it, it's able to do uh, more random uh, responses. So let me make sure that got the uh, and greedy uh, sampling selects words from a prob probability distribution in each step. So again, it's being very, pretty random. Uh, temperature refers to uh, low and high pro probability words. High temperature leads to more variability. So we can uh, make it you know, very, very variable or, or we can have it you know, consistent. And top P and top K I've never really used, but um, refers to uh, uh, probabilities that, that it's going to be using. So advantage of greedy is that it's reproducible, uh, but uh, um, you know, temperature of zero it gets a lot of uh, variance of, of, uh, with the greedy. So let's try, try it with sampling. It will change the temperature to, to uh, high, so it's going to be very, um, uh, you know, a lot of random responses here. And, and I've removed the, the uh, stop penalty, so it came with two, two lines here, or two sets. Give me ideas to start a coffee business, find the right location, create a unique concept, invest in the quality equipment and coffee, provide some insights for success, stay persistent, control your emotions, and uh, stay updated with marketing trends and, and consumer preferences. So we're seeing some new responses based on the fact that it's sampling. It's it's doing more interesting things. Yes. Yeah. I'm you know what is the temperature? The temperature? It it's essentially it, it turns up the heat. The, the idea is that like the more heat, the more ram, randomness. So it's almost like like a gas. The hotter it is, the more it expands. It gets more expansive in its response, and the the more you cool it down, it's going to be less less expansive, less randomness. Um, the I, that I, I understand pretty well. The like the temperature. I, I unfortunately I've never quite understood uh, the top P and top K. I mean, it, they have a description, but I've never quite understood. I, I played with it a bit, but don't quite set the number of highest probability vocabulary tokens to keep for top K filtering. So it's a pretty high level concept. Uh, I, I haven't messed with that myself. Yeah, and then. Uh, we have repetition penalty. So this is some, sometimes the, it starts repeating uh, over and over again. So he switches to the flan. Uh, and let's see if we can cause a repetition. Um, playing with different models. Goes back to flan. And let me see. He's got greedy there, so we'll do greedy. Generate. Not too bad. Let's see if I have something different here then. Oh, repetition one. Now I have the same one. Oh, is that what I'm missing? Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay. 
go, baby go. There we go. So we're getting, thank you for that. So we're getting uh, some repetition here. Uh, and so what we can do is change the, um, you know, you get the same thing, a lot of responses. Th thank you on that one. Um, we can increase the temperature to resolve the problem. Uh, however, the text is still repetitive. You can try a repetition penalty. The higher the penalty, the less likely the results will be. So uh, repetition penalty, higher the penalty, less likely it'll uh, repeat. So a coffee shop is a great place to meet up with friends and family. You can advertise your business by offering free Wi-Fi. If you have a website, you can offer free Wi-Fi to attract customers. So less repetition there. Um, and then general tips. Uh, he suggests trying different models. So you see we were flipping around two different models. But uh, you know, the, some models work better than others. And it's one thing nice about the, the interface, it's very easy to, to try different ones and, and uh, swap them in and out, try them out. Um, understand your use case. So uh, one, one thing we're, we're learning with the large language models is smaller is generally better. Um, it's faster, and I'll show you some stuff a little bit later on that. But uh, from a security perspective, it's generally better to have a small model. Um, it, it usually responds quicker and, and less GPUs to, to run it, less uh, CPU power to run it and train it. And if you want to tune it, less tuning with that. Um, and then here's where they, they talk about intelligence security. Essentially, if you work with smaller uh, large language models, it's better for security. It, just a, less of a, 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 an attack uh, a surface for a, a large, or for, for, for a smaller model versus a large one. So if you're a hacker, which model would you choose to target, a, a large one or a small one? Simple models are more difficult challenge for, uh, for hackers. Um, and then further learning, uh, more information about that. And let me clean it up. And go further with rags. So, one thing, I don't know if you've heard about uh, retrieval augmented generation, but the large language model, it's been trained. So the granite models or the flans or, or, or the larger ones with the chat GPT, they've been trained you know, months ago, maybe perhaps years ago, but you know, they have older information. They, they don't have uh, current information. And, and even if they were uh, you know, uh, trained recently, they may not have your information. So what you can do is have, have the ability to add a vector database with the information that you want it to have. And so I'll show you that here now. But um, to do that, uh, you essentially add uh, grounding with documents there. And I've done two of them with, with the, um, you know, with, the, with this uh, demonstration. So um, this is the, the regular chat. And so the regular chat, it doesn't know anything it's, it's using the Granite model. So the, the first demo with this is gonna be uh, using a GitHub issue. So I've loaded a, a GitHub issue in, into the, uh, the vector database. And the Granite model knows all about GitHub. It, it knows about GitHub issues. It knows about people and, and humans and developers, et cetera. But it doesn't know about a specific issue. It, it wouldn't necessarily know anything about, about what you're working on. So you have the ability that, to add a ground document and so I've added that issue uh, 36122. It just happens to be an, a, a, a GitHub issue. It's a fairly long one. Um, but now you see in the lower left, I've essentially got the chat here, but I've added this issue of 36122. And now we can a ask it something like summarize the issue. And it knows again everything about the, the model itself, but now it's looking at that, that RAG issue that I've loaded in a PDF and it is specifically pulling out um, the summary of that issue. So again, it's a fairly long issue, but uh, um, you can ask it questions. Then next steps with the issue. 
And you know, with the model plus with this RAG document that we've added, it, uh, it knows that the, the next steps of this issue involve you know, working on the APIs for the, the flow, working with the WLML repository, et cetera. So essentially it's specific information. This is, was really easy to add um, you know, use, using the large language model, but then adding your data that you wanted it to, to work on. And uh, we're starting to use this now at, at, in our group. Um, we have these weekly meetings where we're, we're trying to figure out what the status is of all our, our issues. You know, what is still open? What has been closed? What, what's uh, blockers? And we can load the issues up and, and run this and, and you know, it lists out you know, what, what the summary is, where we're at, what, what the blockers are. You can do different queries based on you know, using the large English model, but using that, that RAG data. Um, and I'll take this out. I'm going to add now another one. So oh, and let, me, let me show you too how you do this. Um, it, you can add a new vector index. So if I, if I had something new to it, this is how I added the, the issue and also uh, this other text item. You can add a PowerPoint document. Uh, oops, I just lose my browser. Oh, uh, oh, I know what it's doing. It's, it thinks I'm adding a thing. You can, you can add a, a PowerPoint document. Uh, a, uh, I guess it's a Word document, a PDF, or a text file. So in my case, I, I had a PDF for that issue. And then we can add a text file here, too. Uh, so I added a text file. And what I did is just scraped the, the schedule for the, the Open Source Summit. And... Uh, and now I can see, you know, what tutorial is James Bush speaking? Is James Bush speaking at? And James Bush is speaking at the tutorial titled "How to Win Friends and Influence LLMs." So, essentially, again, the, the large language model, the Granite model, has no idea about the Open Source Summit. It's too new; it wouldn't have been trained on that. But with the the RAG document, it's got it in there, and and has current information now. So, this is an opportunity for you to add your own you know, uh, information. I, I do want to show you, though, that I cheated a bit with the, um, you know, with this, this RAG document. So what I did is created a text file called schedule.txt. I went and I, on the browser, I just went and just grabbed the whole schedule and cut and paste it. And so you see, you know, they have the keynote, they have the, you know, the, the, the entire schedule. So the, the only snag with it was that there's no consistency at all. They're like what I would like to have seen is where it has the title and then you know the name and then has the speaker and the name and the room and the name and the date and the name. That would have been a nice format for it to be in and then the rag would have worked better. But um, because it doesn't have that, uh, there's no consistency in it. When I ask it like who did the keynote speaker on Wednesday, it, it gets confused. It doesn't know. It doesn't know what day Wednesday is. There's no actual Wednesday. They just have timestamps, and it doesn't necessarily even know that's a timestamp. So what I did to make the Bush item work here is I, I and this is really small. I sorry sorry for this. Um, to to make it work, and so I, I, for your rag, if you were to do this, if you're to use text files, I suggest having some consistency. So uh, tutorial, I have it you know one line with a name. I have the speaker and the company, I have the room, and then I have the time. So essentially, I, I classified it, what, what each item is. And so I'd suggest, if we really wanted to use this, you know, instead of just a, an easy screen scrape, it'd be nice if it was in a formatted uh, method where then the, the rag could search for it. But since I did this, there were three tutorials. So I did it to all three. I can't see what I'm... So here's another one. Uh, someone else is doing securing access. So I did the same thing. Essentially, it, I gave a tutorial, the speaker, and the room. This one didn't have a, a time to it. But uh, I did it to all three tutorials. So we should be able to... Are the three tutorials at the open source... Yeah. 
And the three tutorials at the Open Source Summit are these Wind Friends and Influence LLMs, and then the other two items there. So it, it's, it's, it's a nice, this RAG is a nice way to, to make your, your model current. Question. Yeah. Yes? How does this RAG document relate to the information that is already in the LLM? Because the way you phrase your question, it looks as if it's only considering the RAG document. Could you ask, for instance, uh, what are the three tutorials at Open Source Summit in 2023? Would it find it in the generic information in the LLM? Can you prioritize that? Uh, yeah. Anything else? To yeah, that's a good question. So let's uh, look at the instructions for the system prompt. So uh, if you remember, let me, let me go back to the structure thing. If you remember that the top of it, it suggests giving it instructions. Um, and the more specific you are in the instructions, like you want a column list, or you want it to be polite, or you want it to talk like a pirate, or how, whatever instructions you want the LLM to respond with, um, it, the more specific you are, the, the better the, you know, the, the answer for what you want, want it to look like. And so if you look at the chat, they actually have um, instructions. Let me see if I can make it larger here so we can read it. Uh, it's not really helping making it larger. Let me go like that. You are a Granite Chat, an AI language model developed by IBM. You're a cautious assistant. So we want to make sure that it's not getting too crazy with its answers. Uh, you carefully follow instructions. You are helpful and harmless. And you follow ethical guidelines and promote positive behavior. You are an AI language model designed to function as a RAG assistant. When generating responses, prioritize correctness. Ensure that your response is correct given the context and user query, and that it is grounded in the context. Further, um, make sure that the response is supported by the given document or context. Always make sure that, and let me make it smaller. Uh, always make sure the response is relevant to the question. If an explanation is needed, first provide the explanation or reason, and then give the final answer. Avoid repeating information and less asked. So essentially what we're trying to do is not have it hallucinate. We don't want it to start making things up. Be a very precise and concise uh, response. But we, because we've added the rag here, it, it's, 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 I'm sorry, over there. It's considering the rag first. So if we go back and um, remove the rag, you'll see now it, it's smart enough to realize it doesn't have uh, a rag anymore. And so now you see the instructions have changed. Make it a little, there, there's no rag part of this. So you're a granite chat AI developed by IBM. You're cautious, follow behavior. You always respond to greetings. Um, how can I help you today? Please don't say anything else and don't start a conversation. So again, it's cautious. You're trying to not have it hallucinate, but it's taken the rag out of it. So now I think it would be doing you know, if, if, if this model had 2023 information about the Open Source Summit, then I think it would respond. But the first way with the RAG document there, it's going to look, first look at the RAG, um, you know, your data first. Um, but we can try it and see. Um, what, what would the question be? The, uh, well, include the RAG and ask it, ask it about tutorials in Open Source Summit 2023. That would, that would show the answer. Yeah, let, let's try both ways. So the rules in the open source summit in, I'm going to save this. Now, of course, if my RAD document had, you know, 2023, they would, it would help. I don't have real-time access to the upcoming open source summit. The best way to find out about tutorials would visit the open official website check the schedule when it becomes available. I can look up information past open source summits if you like, but I can't provide details. 2020 Sure, let's try. Do we have a 22? <laughs> it's, it's trying. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad you could help. Let, let me clear the uh, um, 
oh, and I have the guardrails off too. The, the guardrails are interesting. I, I forgot to mention those. The guardrails uh, stop, like, it's kind of risky actually that I'm doing this. Um, not, not that I, I don't think the granite models have anything that's, that's, that's offensive in it, but uh, if you turn the guardrails on, you, it, it helps guarantee that you're not gonna have anything racist or, or hate speech or abuse or, or, or swear word come out. So I probably should have, I didn't realize they were off, but um, let's clear this uh, and try this again. So we'll go 2022. Um, and we can also try a, a larger model. So the granite model is only 13 billion. Um, so I've cleared it. So it's, it's now lost the context of the previous questions. So I think it got confused because we've given it so many questions on the 20, you know, on the uh, open source summits. But um, I would recommend checking with the website for the most, you know, for the information for 2022. Um, Yeah. And 2023 was in future. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, does it do a search and then try to import the stuff and then? No. You mean a search to the like the internet? Yeah. No. Like ChatGPT, I just asked ChatGPT. Yeah. Yeah, it, they, they probably have a, a ton. It's a much larger model. So we could try a bigger model than the 13 billion. We can try the largest one. Um, uh, we want to. So what's the difference between inspect and chat? Inspect is reasoning. I, I'm sorry? Yeah. Like some of the oh. chat and Oh, I think instruct, we can, we can look at it, but the, the chat ones is more like a chat bot or, you know, conversation generative AI. The instruct, I think, is more of, um, let's see, it's question answering, summarization, RAG, classification, generation. It, it does have question answering, and we can try it. Um, but usually for chat, if you're doing conversation, you use a chat one usually. But let's go ahead, let's select it. Um, yeah, let's clear it. So we have to clear the conversation to go. So we have 2022 with a, a much larger model here. Oh, look at this. So it actually has it. So the, the problem with the granite was too small. Didn't have it. Yes. Uh, we could check. That's I have not looked at it here, but let's see. Um, oh, it's interesting. It, th this is different, probably because it's a different model. You always answer is with GitHub syntax, probably because it's the uh, what is it again? Instruct one. So it's a little different. I haven't seen this one before. Um, HTML tags uh, must be wrapped. Returning code blocks. So it's more of like language. This is more of a you know, programming language thing. Yeah. But uh, we can try. Let's try adding. Um, let's see. Let's, let's try adding the uh, rag data. And then see what happens if it gets confused with, like, if if the rag data is blocked, it's 2022. Um, or, or if it's able to go through. I haven't tried this before. Yeah, the, the rag is blocking it. Tutorials in open source 2022. Fortunately, the provided document does not contain information about 2022. So rag is getting in the way of that. The document appears to be a a schedule of keynotes, talks, and other events, but doesn't mention tutorials. If you're looking for information about tutorials, I'd recommend the 2022 website or talk to the people for more information. So, can I, yeah. So, uh, the guard links are only to block the offensive space, so why does it interfere with the actual context itself? 
Um, I don't think it, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, he, he's asking with the guardrails, does it interfere with the content? I, I don't think it would in this case because I'm not sure there's any profanity in these models and the IBM models. I, I know they work very hard to, to, to not have that in there. It's, it's a, um, um, okay, that, that was the, the workshop that they had. Um, and let me go back to his document. Um, what we had there then, so this was what we were gonna do, give the, the workshop and then you guys could go further with uh, um, apply what you learned. And so this is essentially a, a series of exercises. There's 11 total um, where you can try different items. And essentially with all these items, it, essentially it's, it's either changing the model, changing the instructions, giving it a little better example, playing around with uh, just, you'll see it with each success item, like I generate, for example, rewrite, summarize. Let's look at the summarize. Get the model to output a one sentence summary of the following short stories, one at a time. And here's some examples to inspire you. And then he has in each one of these, the example answer. So he says, you know, the instruction is write a short one sentence summary of the story provided. So that gives it a specific instruction. He gives it uh, some examples. And then the last one, he, he gives it a story and then the summary. And it's learned that, you know, based on the instruction plus the example, that it should be a, a, a one, one sentence summary of, of the story. Um, so we, each one of those essentially is, is like that. It's gonna be summarization, sentiment, uh, rag, et cetera. Um, the other thing I can show you, which is kind of interesting to me anyway, is there's a, um, there's a group of uh, IBMers that I used to work with and they put together a, um, if we can get it going here. They, and I think I have it on the, let me make sure I have it. Hold on. Um, I think it's on the PowerPoint here. Um, this uh, optional uh, digital self-serve co-create experience, DSCE, it's a terrible name, but essentially it's, it's uh, uh, large language model or AI examples. And uh, so I've, I've got it in the presentation so you can you can go to this later if you want, but uh, it, it has a bunch of different examples they put in where just different ways that you can use AI and use, uh, in this case, Watson X is the back end for this, but you just need to use any chat uh, uh, you know, tool and different things, energy forecasting, uh, you know, embedding uh, in lightweight engines, health assistance, et cetera. But, one of them they have here, which I think is interesting, is the model. Um, uh, let me find it here. Um, compare models with, compare IBM models. And so if you, if you get to this website, most of them you don't need to sign in. Uh, some of them you do. It, it, it actually really is really using uh, uh, a system on the back end. So. If, if it really uses GPUs and really uses the system, the back end, then it, it requires you to sign in with your IBM ID. Um, but we'll do the interactive demo here. And so this particular use case is it's comparing two different models. So we have conversation summary. So this is the conversation and we can uh, generate. And it's comparing two different models, the 13 billion versus the 70 billion. And you'll see that the response to the 13 billion, it's relatively short, but it was very fast. So it's three seconds response time. Tokens was 1300 and cost was about 80 cents to run that. Where the 70 billion chat for the same input, much larger response. Uh, but of course, much longer uh, time to run, uh, more tokens consumed, and the cost is $3. So it's about three times the, the cost. So 
this, this is, again, the examples here, uh, you know, just different items you can, but, you know, these comparing models, what it's showing is that if, if a small model will work for you, um, it's better to use it. It's cheaper, faster, and uh, more responsive. Um, but, yeah, these, these use cases, you're welcome to, to play with them if you'd like. A lot of interesting ones. That last one I'll show you is the um, SQL code generation, and this is an interesting one. Um, here you see the instructions. You're giving it as input. So, so the, the large language model knows about SQL, but it doesn't know anything about your application, about your database, about how you use SQL. So what they give it is an example of, uh, you know, what your, what your columns are, what your table schema is. So you, if you give it all that, that examples of what your tables are, um, then it's able to, um, and, it, see, and then, and, it, and then uh, you give it examples of how you would write your own SQL, and then it will respond, um, you know, with, uh, like, what is the total investment for gold? And it'll come back with a SQL statement. But what's interesting, if you take away the examples, it gets, uh, so here, here's a SQL based on your, your tables. But if, if you take away the, um, the examples, it, it becomes a really uh, a bad uh, response because it doesn't know your tables, your, your columns. It doesn't understand uh, what it is you're trying to do with it. So it's a, a really bad answer. So it, essentially it's showing that examples are key to this. Yeah. Um, let's see if it tells us here. Yeah, it looks like it's a code one. 34 billion code. Code one. But uh, that's about it that I was going to show. Um, do you have any other questions or... Um, you're, yeah. So uh, I'm interested in uh, preparation of big data, so data. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess you have experience with the system box and system M. Uh, for example, in my company, we have a lot of data for traffic, uh, traffic data. Mm -hmm. uh, numbers of trainers, cameras, everything, detection, something like that. Uh, and uh, I saw that you formatted the file uh, with your tutorials and other schedules. So my question is, Yeah, I think it's very important because I think a lot of people uh, just take for granted, okay, here you go, this is the PDF, and get me the correct data. But I think this is also the separate part of uh, learning about artificial intelligence, preparing the data. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, no, that's probably a whole, so, so, a whole specialty. Yeah, you wasted uh, your time, you wasted your time to prepare a format and something like that. And right. Also Right, right. No, it's, it's a very good question. I, I don't have the answer to that, but I could, I could try to find out for you. Right. Because when working in Linux or something like that, you have PDF exports or twins or some other file file types, and it usually gets some errors or something like that. But now that I'm watching your format of text, I'm right now thinking, what should I do with the whole data? So they must actually. That's, that's my suspicion, but yeah, I, I don't know for sure. I haven't, th th that was, you know, my, my experience with it. Um, but if you want, we can share information and I can try to find more. And this is SQL query is also a great idea. I never thought that uh, you can actually put in the SQL dump to the tool. Mm -hmm. and, hey, yeah, I've actually heard that at IBM for some of our developers that, uh, we, we have right now Code Assistant for uh, Ansible, and we have Code Assistant for COBOL. And, but I've heard that for our, like our Python and Go developers and Java developers, that they're being told to, you know, they write their code and put it, you know, push it to GitHub and, and get it out there, but also put it in the Code Assistant. So it, it, it's 
slowly training, give, essentially giving more and more examples to what will end up being a new language model that that has proper good programming information. So we're hoping to have, you know, we've we've announced it. We we don't have a date yet, but um, you know, a, a code assistance for Java and and like a hundred different languages, and it's there. We just need the examples. So once they have them in there, then then it's going to be able to do it. Um. But I guess that's internal uh, for IBM, uh, not like uh, open IE, which I think they were a huge amount of rules on code inside. I think they'll be open source. I, I mean, don't quote me on it. I mean, I, I feel bad if I, I'm incorrect here, but I think all our models that we're doing are, I mean, I believe so anyway, that they're open. So, you know, the granite models, they're open source. So, um, IBM will have a solution where with Watson, you know, is our interface, you get to it. But I think the models themselves are open. Um, I, I believe that. So, yes? So, granite is an open source model. Mm -hmm. uh, IBM Watson is a paid for interface. Right. And I'm looking for a use case for IBM Watson. You might be aware that IBM, together with Red Hat, has launched the Instruct Lab project. Mm -hmm. In the Instruct Lab project, I can tell Instruct Lab, hey, you need to use this LLM, you need to use that LLM. And you can use the exact same uh, LLMs that are available in IBM Watson. So my question really is, uh, as IBM is uh, asking like 1,500 US dollars a month for a premium subscription to Watson, mm -hmm. uh, why would I do that? What is the benefit? Uh, what, what does it add in comparison to Instruct Lab? Uh, for instance, or other interfaces that don't require such an expensive uh, subscription. Yeah, I, I have a friend of mine who did it on her laptop. She was playing with it on, on her laptop. So I did, she couldn't do, you know, like GPU tuning or anything on her laptop, but um, she was running an instruct lab there. Um, I, I, I think you're, you're buying the support, you're buying, you know, access to all the tools. It's... Uh, you could run it, you know, anywhere. Um, I, I would ask you, know, where would you run the Instruct Lab? You know, if, if you didn't run it, fifteen hundred dollars a month on on the Watson X, you know, would you run it on AWS or uh, I'm not sure where you'd put it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I well, I have to see. I, I mean, I haven't done Instruct Lab myself, but I know that people have been running it. Usually, they're using pretty small models, so and that might be just because they're they're doing development with it, but yeah, I don't know if they could run a like a thirteen billion you know model. But so basically, you will be paying for the compute capacity that is behind the paid models. I, I believe so, right? And the multi-user you know access to it. Right, right. Yeah, we also have the capability of running it in private cloud. So this is all on, you know, of course, the internet. I'm connected, you know, to the, the IBM cloud, but you can also get it, you know, privately in your private cloud if you want it. So if you have HIPAA or government uh, or, you know, education purposes, you can keep it, you know, all local as well if you want. But, uh, of course, on your laptop, it's local as well. Great. Any, any other questions? I uh, appreciate you sticking around. I hope hope it was a good session. So, thank you. Uh, thank you.